Oh no. As somebody who regularly dreams about freak waves and splishy splashy holes that I'm falling into, some of the simulations I'm going to show in this video freak me out. But they also tease and titillate me with their possibilities. So if you got a funny feeling when you saw that bit in Interstellar, this video is going to be your worst nightmare. You have been warned. Fluid simulation, the holy grail of computer graphics. But what's that path tracing? Well, this is another computer graphics holy grail, which has been underutilised by games up to this point, in my opinion. There was Hydrophobia, which attempted something similar almost two decades ago, but the game itself was rubbish, and it barely utilised its amazing water physics to do anything. And just the other day I covered Drain Sim, which is all about pumping water out of places and lowering flood levels. Again, with really nice water physics. And here is Fluid Frenzy, a prototype water simulation that looks and behaves very realistically. Look, you'll start by dabbling about with it, but it will inevitably end with you destroying the simulation in a cataclysmic tsunami of unprecedented proportions. Because of course it will. It's literally impossible to resist doing that once you've had your fun messing about with it for real. But the beauty of this sort of fluid simulation is that it can handle cataclysmic tsunamis. It might end up looking weird, but it works, doesn't slow down. It doesn't really matter how much water you have. This is only 2.5D water physics. Imagine a large blanket sprawled over the level. That's how the water here behaves. Every point on it has a height value and various movement properties and so on. This means you can't, for instance, have a cave system with water flowing through it and over it and under it and all that. It's just an interactive sheet of water that's being continually updated. But you know what? That doesn't even matter. As you can see from these showcases, it's good enough to unleash most of my video game flooding fantasies. And the beauty of it is that it isn't too demanding to calculate. You can load it up right now in your browser and dabble with it in various demos. Link in this video's description. And it's even available on mobile devices, just to hammer home how doable this tech is, even on quite primitive computing devices. All it needs now are some games to actually use it. I think of all the showcases, this is the best one showing a volcano and its surrounding caldera. It has a bunch of water spawners around it which all flood into the central area, and the water level will gradually rise until it starts overflowing over the side of the mountain somewhere, creating waterfalls all over the place. Naturally I started to plug all those gaps to contain it all in the middle. The water level slowly rises and rises until it stops rising because it's spilling out somewhere else. So I plug those gaps and so on. And then, as I said, I eventually go ham with the water and lava spawners and ruin the entire simulation in an epic world-ending disaster. There's a Mario Galaxy-style sphere demo where you can simulate a world. It's not actually a full sphere, there is a back to it which is a bit disappointing. I made a 100% accurate version of the United Kingdom and intended to fill the rest of it with sea, but unfortunately used the wrong tool and it wasn't long before the whole place was submerged in miles of water. And then of course I ruined the entire simulation. I can't help myself, okay? But this is a great reminder that if I was a god, I wouldn't be a kind, loving, caring sort. No, I'd be the sort who would try to do some good and then I'd get bored and would mess everything up dramatically. If you're still watching this video and haven't yet opted to try these demos out for yourself, then what's wrong with you? How can you resist? I'll just show myself dicking about with the various demos while I talk about the implications of this tech. Here's another one of the demos where there's a dinosaur skeleton submerged beneath sand which is gradually eroded away and revealed as water passes over it. This showcase is more about removing the sand that's already there, but you can also place sand of your own. And it comes with its own unique properties. You can create mounds of sand which will gradually sink down because it's sand and not a solid surface. The sand does appear to displace the water and lava above it, and it serves as an extra layer above the bedrock, even though it's all painted onto the same surface. For example, when I sprinkle sand onto these cliffs here, you can see it appears to slide off the steep surfaces and to pull at the bottom. Pretty cool. You'll notice the dinosaur's outline remains on the water surface no matter how deep the water gets, which hints at the limitations with this blanket of water approach to the simulation here. But it is still really awesome. And scalable too. Their site discusses a tileable interface, which allows you to piece together multiple different fluid simulation regions together into one bigger one. This means several things. It means that size is never an issue, since you can just piece more regions together if you want a larger or more detailed fluid simulation. It also suggests to me that its workload could be split more easily across your computer's resources. For instance, if all this was being calculated on your processor, which it isn't, you could have a separate core calculating each tile, just as an example. And tiles also makes it possibly more optimised. 
because it means that tiles only need to be placed in the regions of a game level that might require a fluid simulation, and not everywhere all of the time. But there are limitations, namely a speed limit. Fluid can only move one pixel per step, resulting in a maximum and minimum speed to the effect. This does little to mar the experience for me, given that it all seems to move at quite a convincing speed in these showcases, but maybe there are situations where this will become problematic. I imagine it's why this wave appears to have a sharp edge to it, as it's a massive wave travelling away from the source at the maximum wave speed. So to fix this sort of wave, we must wave goodbye to this sort of wave simulation, and move to a more proper fluid simulation that's done the more traditional way where a liquid will comprise of thousands or even millions of tiny spheres which can glob together to give the illusion of being a singular watery mass, or to simulate viscosity and so on. So yeah, this is a more proper way of simulating liquids, with fewer limitations than the fluid frenzy approach, but it is significantly more computationally expensive to render. So you can't have entire oceans of the stuff done in this manner. But doing it properly like this probably is better for smaller amounts of liquid, like piss and shit and blood that's being spewed across an environment or character or object in the level, where the fluid frenzy approach of having like a carpet of water just doesn't work. But now for the big, looming question that nobody wants to address. Is this fun? As in, how can it be made to be fun? The most fun? I've noticed that while there are thousands of cool tech demos for physics stuff online, I'm still drawn to actual games which utilise the physics tech, even if their implementations are more constrained and fiddlier to control. Maybe I get more joy from those things because it's harder to control, more of a challenge, gives you more time to plan your strategy of how to flood an area or whatever. Because as you can see here, without constraints you have your fun with it and then you go wild with ridiculous tsunamis and simulation breaking values. And then that's it, you move on to the next tech demo or go outside or whatever. But with a game like Drain Sim, while the water might be a lot less exciting to look at than these huge interactive spectacles we see here, in Drain Sim they actually serve a gameplay purpose. It's almost as though by making it harder to mess with the simulation, it adds value to the simulation. This is another sort of physics tech, but Star Wars Force Unleashed has breakable windows and statues, and I love it. I can't resist smashing them up every time I see one. It's special every time. Yet if it was just this tech in a tech demo, I'd go about, smash stuff up, and would move on in about five minutes. So yeah, it's like the rarity of the experience adds to the experience for me, where maybe I'm not in control, and where it's the imagination of the game devs and how they implement the technology that gives value to it. So I see this sort of water simulation as being a potentially very fun addition to a proper game, but it has to complement something else rather than being the sole focus of the experience, because otherwise it becomes a race to create the biggest, most ludicrous display possible, and when that takes just a few quick clicks to do, it isn't long before you're done and dusted with it. Two clicks and you've had your fill. Lip. This isn't me trying to belittle the technology, this is me acknowledging that the technology exists, I think it's fine as is. It looks pretty enough, it works well enough, doesn't need many further refinements, it now just needs a game to be showcased in. Now I'm not saying Half-Life 3, but Half-Life 3 in VR would be an excellent place to showcase terrifying floods of water or cool bendy DMM tech. I actually got an email the other day from the makers of DMM saying how incredible it is to mess with this stuff in VR, using your hands to bend and break stuff convincingly. It doesn't have to be Half-Life 3 because Half-Life is, at the end of the day, a game with guns and monsters and stuff. Although Half-Life 2 did have a gravity gun to manipulate physics objects. Oh, who am I kidding? If anybody's going to find a cool gameplay use for these sorts of physics, then it's going to be Valve, isn't it? It's in their name. Anyway, enough of me babbling. Fluid Frenzy, a really cool 2.5D fluid simulation tool. Very scalable, very usable on today's hardware. Try it right now in this video's description.